Good morning. I'm Mother Megan Miller. I'm the rector here at St. James Celeste, and so happy to welcome you here. If it is your first time worshiping here with us in person or online, we are so happy that you are here. Um, if you are visiting, we have a really cool welcome ministry with greeters that will be at, there's a greeter that will be at the back of the church after worship. Um, oh, Janice, yay! She's already back there. And um, so it will, there to give you a little gift bag to take home and um, to invite you to coffee hour, no pressure, uh, if you would like to go. Um, and you will also see uh, children are welcome in all parts of our worship. And we have both Sunday school and middles that are meeting today during the worship service. Um, and so uh, when they escort out, please feel free to join them if you would like. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. <laughs>
God be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, whose blessed Son made himself known to the the readings and the children uh, will head out to Sunday school if they would like. A reading from the book of the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? As though by our own power or piety, we have made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him the perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that the Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading Psalm 4 responsively by half verse. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship on my and run my false gods? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence on your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices. And put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, Oh, that we might see better times. Lift up the light of your countenance on us, the Lord. You have put gladness in my heart. I lie down in peace. At once I fall asleep. A reading from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What, what we will he has, I'm sorry. Um, what we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, 
just as he is righteous. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. He said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understanding the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Take our minds and think through them, take our lips and speak through them, and take our hearts and set them on fire. Amen. Please be seated. Where were you during the 2024 eclipse? I was with Barbara and Colleen. We, uh, Colleen and I went to go visit Barbara in her home and we were breaking bread together, sharing communion, while at the same time keeping a constant eye out the window to monitor any changes in the sunlight. And then at the same time on the television, we had a news channel up that we could feel the buzz of what was happening and we could see the people who had gathered in the parts of the country where they were feeling total darkness and there was just this um, special feeling. I hope you all felt it, that together we had this very, uh, because we, were, we had this reminder that we are all part of the same human family. We're all part of humanity. And in that moment, we remembered that when we paused to admire creation and just the amazing things that this universe has in it that we are a part of. Um, and it was fun to be present um, on this day. I'm so lucky because I, um, although I had heard the buzz on the radio that morning and uh, my family started texting about where they were and how it was where they were in the country, um, I had not remembered my glasses. 
But Colleen was very thoughtful for both of our eyes because she knows how important eyes protection is. So she brought us a pair of those special glasses to make sure that we put our glasses on uh, to protect our bodies. And, um, and so we were able to see the eclipse. Um, and then throughout the day, I don't know about you, but it was just this like positive hum uh, in my family, uh, at work. Um, and I can imagine that it was a similar type of buzz that was starting among the disciples in today's gospel story. If we remember, they had just experienced a really deep low, that their, their leader had died um, in a very tragic way, and they were mourning his death, when then there was all these stories buzzing around. Story that there was an empty tomb from the women and Peter who went to visit. Then there was two disciples that, out of fear, were leaving Jerusalem, heading towards Emmaus, when, and they come rushing back, saying that Jesus had appeared to them on the way there. So there was this positive hum, this little buzz and whispers of stories and what's happening. And then all of a sudden, Jesus shows up right there. And he's like, hey, peace, guys. Uh, <laughs> and they're like, wah! And they think he's a ghost, right? They're very afraid because they think it's not Jesus. It's a ghost of Jesus. Um, but Jesus is like, hey, it's me. I'm, it's not a ghost. Look, look at my hands, look at my feet. Hey, I'm hungry. Anybody got some fish? So he it goes, somebody gets some fish, he eats. So he reminds them that he himself is embodied. He is the incarnate Christ. He has a body just like they have a body. And so that they are reminded that they have a connection with Christ and one another. They all have a body. They all have the spirit of Christ. And um, this is uh, the most beautiful, one of the most beautiful things about having a body uh, and being incarnate is that we all have bodies. It is one thing that really ties all of us together. And I want to read from um, an ep Episcopal priest whose name is Barbara Brown Taylor. You, I don't know if you've read her before. She's a great author. And um, in this book called An Altar in the World, she writes about the big theological terms like incarnation and what they, how they show up in our daily lives. And she has one chapter in which she talks about the practice of wearing skin. And um, part of what she says about it is how having a body connects us in a very unique, unique way to all of us who have bodies. So I just want to read a very short excerpt what she says. When I see someone run into a piece of furniture, catching the corner of a table right in the thigh, my own thigh hurts in that exact same place. When I am sitting next to someone in a meeting and our stomachs growl at the same time, we both shift in our seats, unable to ignore a connection more fundamental than knowing each other's names. When I watch a perfect stranger open her mouth for a bite of key lime pie at my favorite Mexican restaurant, my mouth waters without my permission. My body is what connects me to all these other people. Wearing my skin is not a solitary practice, but one that brings me into communion with all these other embodied souls. It is what we have most in common with one another. And it is also my experience that whatever it is um, that we have experienced, if you yourself have experienced something in your body, it's other people who have gone through similar experiences that allow you to really um, connect with those people. If you know someone who's gone through something you've gone through physically, you too have a connection that is very unique and strong. Uh, a friend of mine this week was telling me um, his experience with that. He recently had a health scare and he was able to feel like you only know if you've been through it, what it's like to have a health scare. He said, going through throughout your days, people might say to you, how are you? And people and you respond and say, well, I'm fine and I, I am fine. But actually, I also have this buzz, this constant buzz of stress in the back of my head because I'm thinking um, about, am I fine? Um, because I don't know. 
And what it's like to have to show up to the doctor's appointment and say, well, we don't know what it is, so we have to perform some tests. So perform some tests, wait four weeks, make another doctor's appointment, get some more tests, wait four weeks, go back to the doctor and repeat. And for all this time, you're wondering, am I fine? Is it this type of cancer that is not aggressive and very easy to treat? Or is it this other type of cancer, which is very aggressive and very hard to treat? Or is it nothing and I'm just sick and it's just gonna go away and I'm gonna feel better? Um, and that you only know what that's like if you have been through it. And when, uh, once you have been through it, you can connect with those others who have gone through that in the exact same way, in a way that others um, just cannot. And in my experience, anything physical like that is that way. Anything with our bodies connects us. So if you have had COVID, um, then you know exactly what it's like the second someone says, oh, I had COVID last week. Oh, you know exactly what that means immediately. Uh, now I know what it means, what it feels like to be pregnant or to be breastfeeding uh, in a way that nobody else knows. I'm telling you, when I tell a woman that I need to go pump, she's oh, go ahead, honey, go right it. They know what that feels like. So um, like nobody else. And so when Jesus said to his scared disciples who were imagining that they were separate from God and from, or from Jesus, they thought he was a ghost, right? That they were different. They were imagining differences that separated them from him. And he said, once he said, hey, look at my body, look at my hands, look at my feet. I'm hungry. And they know what it feels like to be hungry. Can you get me some fish? So that once they had that moment where they um, connected on that bodily level, they were able to remember that there is nothing really that is separating them. And so when we hear that chatter, that just because somebody uh, has a different belief than us, because someone has had a different experience than us, because someone looks different than us, that these are all things that we are imagining that separate us because we all have bodies and we all have the spirit of Christ within us. So may we love that spirit in one another. Amen. Please join me in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God. Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. We are grieved by our troubled world, the deep animosity in American politics, 
and the people suffering in wars in so many countries around the world. Help us find a way out of this madness. Jesus said to them, why are you frightened? We lift up those who live in fear because medical or mental health issues of their own or of their loved ones, especially those who have asked to be named in our prayers. Deborah, Donna, Julie, Bill, Libby, Bob, Chip, Ann, Bill and Jane, Mike, Jim, and Bill. Are there others? Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Jesus said to them, have you anything here to eat? We pray for the millions of people in the world who live with daily food insecurity, hunger, and malnutrition because of famine and economic inequalities. Guide those of us with much in, in how to help provide for those with so little. Jesus opened their mind to understand the scriptures. We pray for our confirmation class, their teachers and mentors, that you will continue to open their minds to the scriptures. Chandler, Arden, Eloise, Lyra, Charlie, Nora, and Shay, and their teacher, Heather, and their mentors, Dane, Kristoff, and Jim. Jesus said to them, the Messiah would ri rise from the dead. We commemorate today Diane Sawyer, Janet Paul, Pam Hardy, Charles Vernon Sr., Libby Swift, David Dubel, and Ann Roberts, in whose memory the altar flowers are given today. Are there others? May we, with all the faithful departed, come to share in the life of the age to come. Heavenly Father, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us to the kingdom of your Son. Through his death, he offers us eternal life. May his continual presence with us be an ever-living spring of joy. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please offer each other a sign of peace. the love and I'm just gonna make um, a couple announcements and then George is gonna do a grand finale uh, announcement for us um, so the first one is letting you know that in this time of year we are visioning for the summer and for next program year and in, so please share your opinions. We've already been starting to put exciting things on the calendar, like Lobster Fest and Progressive Dinner for next program year. But before we get to next year, we have the summer. And um, we are in a place of discernment about where we will worship over the summer. We are planning to have Beatles Mass on June 2nd out in the Krogman Courtyard. But the question is, where we should worship for the rest of the summer. And so if you have an opinion about that, we want to hear it. Um, and it's very helpful. I'll tell you, somebody shared with me, la uh, has already helped me. After the eight o'clock service, they pointed out how there'll be cicadas this summer, which could be very noisy. So, um, so please do share your opinion because the Holy Spirit makes God's will obvious through uh, the community. So please do not hesitate to share your opinion with me or with Josh, who will be at staff meeting with our planning next week, or Heather, who may be scurrying around, or with any vestry member or warden. Could the vestry members and wardens stand? 
Okay, so we, here we have Chip and George and Tony and Marty and Glenn and Tobias. So please share with them your opinion, if you have one, about where we worship over the summer. Um, thank you. Um, I was also asked by our fearless and wonderfully hardworking Alter Guild or Flower Guild leader uh, to let you know that if you would like to take home an Easter lily, that she would love for you to take one. I think they are in the kitchen. Yes, and I'll just say um, it's a really wonderful thing. As you notice, today's altar flowers were given in Ann Roberts' honor. Um, if you would ever like to have the altar flowers given in the honor of one of your loved ones or an anniversary or a birthday, that is always um, an option. You can talk to Judy about details on that. All right, George, it's your turn. Thank you, Megan. Uh, you may remember in January we had two visitors uh, here in church with us, uh, Chaplain Leslie Hunter from Holy Family School and the CEO of Holy Family Ministries, uh, Cheryl Collins. And we're gonna go see them again. Uh, the reception I thought was terrific. Uh, so we've planned a bus trip because we think we'll have a lot of people. Uh, it'll be Wednesday, May 15th. We'll leave from our parking lot here at uh, 10 o'clock arrive at the school at 11, have a tour of the school uh, with uh, Cheryl Collins, and the tours are usually led by students, so we'll see some of the students there. Then we'll have lunch, and then we'll go to the chapel service, which is uh, officiated by uh, Reverend Hunter. Uh, we'll then get back on the bus. We should be back here around uh, 2.30 or so. Uh, Carol Metzger has created a uh, sign-up genie, so you can sign up online. We have room for 23 people. Uh, the school would like to know by uh, May 1st. So if, if before then, if you, could, if you could sign up and let us know, that way then we'll know uh, if we might you know, invite some other people who happen to live in the area who support the school. Uh, if, there, if I could describe the school in one word, uh, it would be joyful. Uh, I try to get there every fall and every spring. I don't always make it, but I always try to take somebody with me. And I can remember years ago, one of my buddies who came with me who lives out around here said, as we're leaving, uh, coming out of the service, he said, you know, you hear, just about everything you hear about the city is bad. But then you come here and it's completely the opposite. Uh, and it's because of the energy of the students and the love of the staff for the students. We'll be singing and dancing. Uh, we'll be using our bodies. Uh, Leslie Hunter has choreographed dance moves that uh, we'll, we'll be using during the service. So uh, anyway, if, if you can make it, please come. I think you'll enjoy it. Thank you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. And before we sing today's offering hymn, I just wanted to introduce it to you. It's a new hymn published this year, written by Steve Thorngate, who is the husband of Reverend Nadia Stefko, who's at St. Augustine's in Wilmette. And uh, so this is uh, from a collection of his of Lent and Easter songs. And this song, The Living Body, does a really nice job of tying in that gospel imagery of the disciples encountering the living body of Jesus tying that to our collective body as the current body of Christ. Uh, there is, however, one typo. So beware, when you get to the bottom of page 11 on the second verse, the line is, we buried him and we doubted what he told us. In the uh, music there it says, and he doubted what he told us, but we <laughs> doubted makes more sense. So just beware of that when we get there.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to our Lord, to the Lord our God. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being, sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways, but we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify as we sing. Glory and honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might bear, conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and again he gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now, gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ, crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ risen for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with all, with all your saints, especially St. James the Less, from every tribe and language and people and nation, to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven,
These are the gifts of God for the people of God, holy food for holy people.
Let us pray together. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of Live without fear. Your creator has made you holy, has always protected you, and loves you as a mother. Go in peace to follow the good road, and may God's blessing be upon you always. Amen. Good morning, Tom. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Hey, Jenny. It was nice having you here today. Oops. Okay, great. I thought I had my mic on still. Sorry. That's so nice. What? What? How did you know about us? I, I drive past her. Oh, yeah. 